Hello everyone and welcome to my talk about at GraphQL Summit. And today we're going to talk about view and Apollo combination of version 3 outside the mainstream. And let me explain why this talk has such a pretentious name about being outside the mainstream. If you take a look at the GraphQL world with the eyes of front-end developer, then there will be this happy land, this don't city of React, an Apollo client, and optionally TypeScript, where you have all the necessary tools and integrations for your everyday work. You can start using React with Apollo straight away. You know how to test, you know how to do everything. You have lots of documentation about this. And there is this frozen land where everyone else is living. And this is true for Vue.js in particular as well. It doesn't mean that we don't have tools, but it's rather a kind of wild west where we have sometimes too many tools and we don't know what to use for which task, or sometimes tools are not there and you need to invent your own one. And in this talk, I want to cover this part of the world. How do we live there? How do we handle working with GraphQL and Apollo? And how do we feel about this in general? And let me introduce myself. My name is Natalia, and I'm a core team member of Vue.js framework. I'm responsible for writing Vue documentation, especially for version 3. If you are reading Vue v3 documentation, there is a high chance that it was written by me. So as you can guess, I know about Vue 3 a lot. And I work as a staff front-end engineer at GitLab. At my work, we are using Vue and Apollo in our main front-end stack. And I, in particular, was responsible for bringing Apollo client to our code base, mentoring my team about how to use it, and advocating for using Apollo as our main state manager. So I have a lot of knowledge about how to combine Vue with Apollo, how to use it, and what we're lacking there as well. And as a side note, I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies. So Vue 3 and Apollo 3. If you don't know, they were released quite close to each other. Apollo Client 3 went live in July 2020, and for Vue.js, it was September 2020, so only two months later. But while for Apollo Client, the introduction and adoption path was smooth, and I want to thank Apollo developers for this, because you started introducing changes in Apollo Client 2.6, announcing them early, deprecating some things that were to be deleted in Apollo Client 3. So it was more or less a good way to go. With Vue 3, it's a bit different. While the core of Vue 3 was released and it's mature now, we have version 3.2 already, in the world, so it's completely ready for production, the ecosystem is still a bit behind. And what I mean by ecosystem, it means that our plugins that were used for many everyday tasks sometimes are still not in release. Some of them are in alpha, some of them are in beta, and most major companies with enterprise size code bases are still not using these tasks. And unfortunately, this is the case for the integration tool for our view and Apollo client. So, view Apollo. Why do we even need this? In React, you can just use Apollo client right away in your React application. Unfortunately, this is not the case for you, because we need a middleware, a middleware that will kind of connect view reactivity that is based on proxy and Apollo reactivity that is based on observable and to make them work together. And for us, this is view Apollo by Guillaume Cho. And unfortunately, version four that we need for view three and Apollo three integration Easing alpha. It's a bit funny, like version mismatch. We have view 3, Apollo 3, but view Apollo version 4, and it's an alpha. It doesn't mean this library is not mature enough not to use it. 
It is. It's quite fine. The documentation is a bit behind, I would say, but it's completely usable. And I want to cover this particular library in my talk now because it will be, in fact, a standard for the future. Even so, it's now in alpha. It will be in beta soon and released as well. And like for two years after, we will be using this version of the library. And what is different about this library in version 4 is that previously it had only one API, one and a half, I would say, one main API and also presenting components. But now it has two. It's not a specific feature of Vue Apollo. It's what happened with Vue version 3. Previously, we had one API. We call it Options API right now. And now we have two. We have Options API. We're still keeping it. And there is also a Composition API. And helps us with abstraction and some more things. I will cover it a bit later. So Vue Apollo version 3 also has two options. Vue Apollo option and Vue Apollo composable. As you can guess, Apollo option is for options API and Apollo composable goes for the composition API. Let's take a look at both of them. So options API is a standard syntax for Vue 2, a more or less standard syntax for Vue 3 as well. It uses object structure to define queries. So everything is super declarative and it requires additional logic for error state. So it doesn't expose the error you will need to store the error state somewhere else. Let's take a look on how this works in the view application. So here I have a Rick and Morty API. I use it in a lot of GraphQL talks because it's, it's really an amazing API and it's easy to test any kind of queries against it. I will be fetching a list of characters and I will copy paste it right away. And here we have a super simple view application that only renders our view plus Apollo heading. And we want to render a list of fetched characters. Let's take a look at our code for a moment. We don't need to dive deep into all the settings here for view application. This is described nicely in view Apollo docs. Most important part that you need to know if you are working with any framework besides React, is when you import your methods for creating Apollo client, HTTP link, in-memory cache, like anything from Apollo, use Apollo client core. Because if you miss this and if you import them from Apollo client, you will also bring React as a dependency. And having React as a dependency, the application that uses a different framework is a bit of overkill. Apollo client core. It's only thing that is non-React specific. Let's add our query here. So I would need the GraphQL tag to parse this query. So let's import GQL from GraphQL tag. And I say that const characters query is GQL parsed. And I copy paste my query here. Now I need to add this query to my component. I will store it under the characters property. So first I'll add here default, an empty object for characters. And data in view application represents any reactive data that we have here. So characters is an empty, uh, an empty object. And now we start adding our query. All the queries with option API go under Apollo property in view application. Here we have the key for our query, it's called characters, and we need to define the query stream for it, which is characters query. So far, we are not rendering anything. Let's just go to our browser and check the console. So here goes our network. And as you can see, there is this GraphQL call bringing us characters. Let's go to view DevTools and see that our characters are stored under the characters key in our application. And we have them in characters results. So now we can 
Use this to iterate over these results and show the character name on the page. I will use simply a p tag and so we are iterating over characters results. We need to specify a key for rendering, a unique key that will say that this particular character is different from that character. We have a character ID for this. And I only want to render the character name. So here we go. Here is our application. As you can see, it renders a list. And one more good thing that we can have here, we can also have free loading state from our Apollo client. So I would say that if our Apollo queries characters loading is true, we render some loading state. If not, and for this I will add v else. So if we're not loading, we are rendering a list of characters. Now you can see that there is this short moment when we have loading state. But unfortunately, when you use Options API, it's impossible to expose the error. You can have an error hook, so whenever query errors, you can use a side effect to store the error somewhere. But you cannot have it directly from the Apollo client. So let's add some error property. Error is false right now. And let's render one more thing here. Say something went wrong. And we only want to show this if error is true. Our query has different properties. So we define the query string. We can use variables if we have any variables to pass to our Apollo query. But also we have hooks. And in particular, we are going to use an error hook. And in this error hook, whenever error happens, we say that our error is equal to true. So currently there is no error, everything is loading, but let's go to our characters query and make something fail. And as you can see, something went wrong because we have 400. This is not very useful with Options API because you need to do an additional work. The worst thing about Options API is you cannot abstract your queries. You can only use mixings, and mixing in view is just an object that contains any kind of component properties. And this is not the way. One more thing that you would need to know about options API queries is update hook. And in old examples for React, update is created for shaping data. So you can have some kind of derived value in the update hook you're shaping. While in view, we have a nice thing called computed, which is essentially a getter. So for example, at GitLab, we strongly recommend not to use update hook on the query, but replace it with a computed property like this. Why it's good? Because sometimes you need to have multiple things from your query, especially if the query is deeply nested. Maybe you want to have the characters and also you want to have a page info about this character's query. So you will have two computed properties, but update hook, you can have only one of them. That's why our recommendation goes for computed in view. And one more thing that annoys me really in the options API is whenever I use mutations in Apollo, I need to handle the loading state myself. There is no built-in mechanism that will help me with loading state of the mutation. For queries, you remember that there is loading, but for mutation, I have a flag that I need to set to true, and then I need to change it to false. 
whenever mutation is finished. So let's take a quick look about how composition API looks in our application. And I'll go and oop, I will just cancel any changes that I made and I will switch to the composition API. So we have the query already and we have our app. And for composition API, we're going to use a new property called setup and methods that are defined in view Apollo. So in my component, I want to query data. So I'm going to import a composable that is called use query from view Apollo composable. And I will say that const result is a result of my use query. And here I need to pass my characters query as a first parameter. And of course, I need to return result. Let's go to the application. It says it in the login state because we set it to true. And my dev tools are failing, so let's reopen them, check view, check our app. And as you can see, that our result contains an object of characters that contains results. Now we need to extract this somehow, because it would be nice. So const characters is, and here we will go with a second method of composable called use result. And user result will expect from us uh, the data that the shaping function that we want to use in this particular case. So as you can see, it returns from use query to result. So here we are passing our result, the default value for it, an empty object, and our extracting function. We want to return data characters, results. And we need to return characters, of course. Here we go. So in our app, right now, we see that there is the characters array. And in characters, we already have results exposed. So we only need to render. We don't need to return result anymore. And let's add our proper conditions here. So here I will say, for now, I will say that this is true. And we will be using characters, not characters results, with a character name. And here goes the list. But we also rendering error and loading state. And what is nice about the composition API is I can expose them right from here. Is loading, is error. And I can return them from here. And render them here. So if there is is error, we're showing error. If we are loading something, we want to show loading. And if loading is finished, we have this. So currently, there is loaded state, and we, sh we have the list of results. Oh, probably I failed with this. So let's replace them without yeah, loading an error, not is. Same here. An error. Okay, here we go. And now, as you can see, it's Boolean state, and we can see the loading state here. And it's great because we can use the same thing for mutations. We call use mutation, and loading state is right there, as same as error. You don't need to create any additional flags.
And what is great about this, you can have your custom composables that use, use query or use mutation. You can combine them, import them, and use them in your application. One more intervention is view is immutable by default. We have mutable global state and Apollo cache, and unfortunately, is immutable. That's why in our applications, we decided to use Emer as a library for immutability. Just make sure that every single time that you're writing something to cache, you're using Emer, so not mutating the Apollo cache. And the last moment I want to briefly cover is unit testing. Unit testing in Vue and Apollo was a big pain for me. Currently, if you go to Google and search for Vue Apollo unit testing, what you will have is a documentation on Vue Apollo about testing that was written by me back in times. This is for Vue Apollo version 3. You will have my article on 2020 about testing Vue and Apollo, and you will have my old article back from 2018 about how to test them on a very, I would say, shallow level when mocking the data. As you can see, I had a lot of research on this topic. And we are using Mock Apollo client library. It's a great library. It's completely framework agnostic. You could use it for React as well. And we came up with this path of just mocking Apollo client, providing Apollo client into a view component. And then with create mock client, you can also set request handlers. So I would say that the do query returns this data. The only thing you need to care about is the structure of your response should be the same as your actual response. I understand that this adds a bit of boilerplate and for React, you have React testing library by Apollo. So everything comes with a package, but this is definitely better than nothing. So I hope you learned a bit about our view and Apollo landscape. And now you know how to use Apollo in your, your application. Thank you.